Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at MiniBridge. Now MiniBridge is a new CS5 feature and it works hand in hand with its big brother, Bridge. And I was sitting here thinking, you know, what topic to talk about today for the podcast and a user by the name of Bo, you know, sending me emails back and forth, you know, learn, trying to learn how to use MiniBridge and I thought, thanks, you just gave me my topic for the for today. So, first off, Bridge is still a standalone application. So if you launch Bridge, you will still see the same familiar Bridge interface that you've always seen. You'll be able to make your own custom uh, bookmarks or folders that you want to be able to jump to at any given time. But if you're in Photoshop CS5 or InDesign CS5, you'll be able to get to Mini Bridge as a panel. Now, I already have MiniBridge docked uh, along with the rest of my panel, so I can just click the one button to get to it. If you don't already have it docked in InDesign, it's under the window menu called MiniBridge. And in Photoshop, it is also under the window menu, but it is in a different spot. It is in the extensions pullout, so, or flyout. So if you go to um, Window, Extensions, MiniBridge, you'll be able to get to it from there as well. And it's the same mini bridge. Now, here's the thing. Although I can get to mini bridge from either application, either InDesign or Photoshop, mini bridge is actually talking with bridge running in the background. So bridge actually has to be running in order to use mini bridge. You can't use mini bridge without launching bridge at some point. And if you don't launch it, it will launch it for you. So you can have bridge start up automatically or you can launch it ahead of time or you can have mini bridge launch it but at some point it's going to need to talk with bridge now you might ask well why well the, the thing is instead of mini bridge taking resources away from Photoshop and taking RAM away from Photoshop or InDesign it's actually tied to bridge so it's using all the processing power of bridge without using any of the resources for Photoshop or InDesign so therefore it's like a window in either of these applications to bridge running in the background now the point is, what can you do? Well, you'll notice you have a navigation panel. And the navigation panel allows me to get to, uh, if I go all the way up here, I can get all the way back to my computer. So if I click on my computer, I can get to any hard drives or servers or DVDs or CDs, whatever optical media I might have mounted. I can get to any folders this way. Or, of course, I can go to my shortcuts. And these are the same exact shortcuts that you have saved in Bridge. Now, the other things that you can do besides navigating your folders is you can actually do some of the work here in MiniBridge without having to go to regular Bridge. You can rename files. You can do searches. So I can do a search, for example. Now, you notice I have two types of searches. The first search is using the built-in search of your computer. In my case, I'm on a Mac, so it's using Spotlight. So if I search for Tower, for example, <coughs> It will find in MiniBridge across my computer all the things that have the word tower in them. So I'm seeing Eiffel Tower, I'm seeing Coit Tower, I'm seeing all the things that have tower. If I need more power than that or more options, I can use the Bridge Advanced Search. And this will actually use Bridge to return the results and let me get to more criteria. I can add as much criteria or as little criteria as I'm looking for. So maybe I want Bridge in the description, but I only want the ratings of, let's see, is equal to or greater than, let's say, greater than or equal to five stars. So that will find all my five star tower images. So, and if I click find on that, it will quickly take me over to bridge and now it's only showing me the five star images that have the word Oh, and I think I did an or in that case, but it's, so it's finding five stars or tower images in this case. We go back to bridge. I can show you where you would want to change that. Right now, the criteria says if any criteria are met, what I want it to say is if all criteria are met. So in other words, it has to find both. It has to be five stars and have the word tower in it. And now that will return that, and I can, of course, continue to work on those images in bridge or I can use the regular search inside of MiniBridge. 
Now, if you want to go back and forth between the folders that you drill down into, you have your back and forward buttons as well, as well as your history. So you can just jump down to a particular folder that you've gone to in history, as well as getting back to the home page for your navigation. If you want to go to launch um, the regular bridge, you can do that from this menu. And you have the ability to um, change your panel view. You can also even bring up the little preview pod, which I don't really find much use in this case, unless you're really going to make bridge a nice big window. So if you do that, then, you know, your preview will get bigger. But I typically work with the preview pane off because, again, I can see them fairly large or large enough in the actual thumbnail view here. All right, then one more thing down below, you have your content. So you have the ability to um, find or to select or show. So I can say show hidden files. Select all, because I find myself sometimes doing a command A in mini bridge and it's not working because that's tied to the rest of the application. Whereas if I say select all, it will actually do it here or deselect all, or I can you know manually hold down my command key on the Mac or control key on Windows and uh, select non-contiguous selections, and I can inverse that selection saying find or select all the other ones that I didn't select. So you have lots of choices for finding content, getting to your content, and of course, once you find something you want, you can just hit your uh, enter key or, or double click to launch that item right here in um, whatever program you're in. So in this case, I'm in Photoshop, so it launched it to be able to edit it. If I go back to InDesign and I bring up Mini Bridge and I go to that same Photos folder that we were just in, I'll get to the same photos, and I can instead use that to drag photos in to place them in InDesign. So I can use the same placing technique that I've shown many times before by dividing the frame up into four frames and bringing in my four images. So really cool features for someone that wants the power of Bridge, but without having to go back and forth between the two applications. I can get the majority of my work done here and would never leave InDesign or never leave Photoshop. And for those really powerful things that Bridge can do, I still have full Bridge running in the background whenever I need it. So that's a quick look at how many Bridge is used, how it's built in as a panel to both InDesign CS5 and Photoshop CS5, and how you can use it to quickly access your images, do searches, navigate all your folders from all the way back from your hard drive, all the way down to any folder, and use any of your preset saved locations that you did in Bridge right here in MiniBridge. So that's it for this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. I hope you will now take advantage of MiniBridge because it's there in Photoshop and InDesign CS5. Take care.